Good morning, children. Hope everyone is staying safe and healthy. Children, uh, last class that is on twenty seventh. Whatever MCQs I have given, let me discuss those MCQ. Before I start the discussion, children, one thing clear, make it clear in your mind that elements. How can you consider elements to be metals or non-metals so that it will be easy for you also to mark the MCQs question. metals outermost shell for example sodium if i take sodium let me start with sodium atomic number 11 if i distribute this 11 it will come to 8 and 1 if outermost shell outermost shell is having outer means the last shell k l and m and if the last shell is having Number one, two, or three—they are considered to be metals. Always remember this. And for example, oxygen, whose atomic number is eight, and if I distribute it, it will come two and six. And now its last shell is the second one, that is K and L shell. And this L shell is having six. So if the last shell is having Four, five, six, and seven number of electrons. Then we consider them to be non-metals. And the last, which is left, if the number, for example, argon, and argon, uh, its atomic number is eighteen, and we distribute as two, eight, and eight. That is eight plus two, ten. Ten plus eight, eighty. And if the last number is having eight, eight, eighteen, thirty-two, completely filled, we consider to them as a noble gases. So now it will be easy, children. Whenever you see any element, remember its atomic number, which I taught you from one to twenty. Your standard standard eight is one to twenty. And that one to twenty, if the number is four, you distribute it. First shell two, second shell two. This has been considered as the last shell. Means if it is two, ma'am told if it is one, two, three, it is metal. Okay. If it is seven, then two and five. Okay. Last shell five means it is non-metal. And I already explained you about the exceptional case about hydrogen. hydrogen being having one as an atomic number which has been considered as last shell but it is a non metal because its all physical properties comes under non metal rather than metal so hydrogen has been considered as non metal so if you go my previous video if you have any doubt you can see about hydrogen also which i have explained you let's start with the mcq now it will be easy for you children the mcqs are that is the first mcq the question is among the following elements which is not a metal i'm directly writing the symbol children a copper if you see copper is a metal and copper i have discussed with you the atomic number if it is more than 20 also because it is a transition element so i have explained you this also so b sulfur i'll give a symbol c it is aluminium and d it is iron so we considered copper metal sulfur if you see the atomic number of sulfur you will find it out that it it is more than 3 in its outermost shell so it will be sulfur same goes for aluminum whose atomic number is 13 and same goes for iron which is not there but i explained you iron is a metal that is why you have been seen iron has been rusted with oxygen and water so your option will be the second option that is sulfur Let's see the second question. The substance that will be flattened on beating with a hammer is hammer. If you want to make it flatten when it has been beaten, then we say uh, the property is malleability property. So malleability always goes with 
uh, metal. So here crystal of iodine. So iodine, which I'm giving a symbol. So iodine, it's a non-metal. Uh, B, sulfur, a non-metal. C, coila, coal, which is a carbon. Again, a non-metal. So if I say carbon for coal and D, which is zinc, children, I'm giving a symbol. And zinc is being easily flattened because it's considered to be metal. So children, if you find the rest of the three are non-metal, then automatically go with the last one. If it is uh, none of the above or none of the these or any element given, means the last one has to be metal. Don't ask me this question, ma'am. This is zinc does not come under 1 to 20. But these three comes under non-metal children. So definitely zinc has to be a metal which can be easily flattened. Let's see the third question. The third question be materials which can be drawn into wires. Drawn into wires means again the property goes for ductility. And ductility is silver. You have seen silver. Its symbol is AG. So definitely it's a metal. If I see copper, copper it's a metal. If I see sulfur, sulfur is a non-metal. And if I see aluminium, it's a metal. So metal, metal and metal. So what is left which is not following the ductility rule? That is the non-metal which is option number C. The fourth question says metals are generally solid. Which of the following metal is in liquid? It's very easy children. Uh, exceptional case which I have already taught you. It is mercury and the symbol is HG. I'm giving the symbol. No need of giving the symbol. Write the name directly. It's mercury which is an exceptional case. So the rest I am not reading because all comes in the solid state which is silver, aluminium and sodium. Now, children, let's see the next question, which is the fifth one. Which of the following property is not responsible for copper to be used as electrical conduction wire? Here, children, I uh, repeated the two options, that is B, color, and one more option, that is D, color. So... Hopefully, few students ask me, ma'am, these top uh, points have been repeated. I told them if you find that color is the option, then you put both B and D. So, yes, which of the following property is not responsible, not responsible for copper to be used as electrical conduction wire? Electrical conduction means a particular material which can conduct electricity. So, color does not matter. So, option will be both B and D. Now, the next part says, name the metal present in the following bases. Children, bases, I think everyone knows. I have taught you through the equation. What are bases? Which contains a radical O, H. And if I say weak base, it will contain only O. You have learned metal oxide and metal hydroxide. So here I am giving you with hydroxide, I'm putting the name MgOH. What is the name of the metal over here? Magnesium. Magnesium hydroxide. Magnesium is the metal. Calcium hydroxide. If I write the formula, calcium valency 2, hydroxide valency 1. What is the metal over here? Calcium. Copper hydroxide. I would have taken 1 or 2, whatever, but I'll take 1 as the valency. So, plus 1, minus 1. So, CuOH. Don't go with plus, minus now. Only valency. 1 and 1 cancel. Got it? So, copper hydroxide. What is the metal? Copper. Sodium hydroxide. So, I can write NaOH. What is the name of the metal? Sodium. I hope, children, it's the, all the MCQs and all the questions are clear now. So let's start with the new topic that is which I already told you children. Metals react with oxygen, metal oxide. Metal oxide react with water become a metal hydroxide. Now today we will study with non-metals react with oxygen. Let's see the general formula children. That is non-metals React with oxygen. 
simply children if you know metals react with oxygen just opposite of it general formula non metals when react with oxygen it form non metallic oxide here we will take non metallic oxide react with water gives you acids nature we will do litmus paper test which will show the blue litmus changes into red and nature is acidic this is a general formula children non metals react with oxygen form non metallic oxide non metallic oxide react with water form acids to test the nature litmus paper test both litmus you will take you will find blue has turned to red which is acidic in nature and opposite which you have we have learned metal react with oxygen metallic oxide metallic oxide react with water that is bases metal hydroxide litmus paper test red to blue now we will do activity related to non metallic oxide start children uh, now for the activity that is activity 4.4 for this activity which is in page number ncert 47 the aim is non metals when react with water is acidic in nature so we have to prove it does that that when non metals mix with water they are acidic in nature yes that we have to prove so what we will take for that we will take deflagrating spoon deflagrating spoon is this children this is known as d flagrating spoon and this spoon you will fill yellow color sulfur powder why did i took sulfur because sulfur is a non metal and it will be easy for me to show you the test because if immediately when you heat sulfur it will release fumes and what more i required i required both the color litmus paper blue as well as red so it is blue litmus and it is red litmus and i required a glass jar also so what i will do i will take small amount of sulfur in this deflagrating spoon and i will heat it if you hold it over here with a tong tong you will find in the lab because this has been a, a metal and metal has a good conductivity so better you hold it with the tong and in this metal inside is a non metal so there is no part non metal will only release fumes so immediately heat it very properly so immediately this base as soon as this base of this particular deflagrating spoon when it start get it heated up it heats the sulfur powder also and when you will find the fume has been started coming from the sulfur and it's a sufficient amount of fume you immediately remove the jar a uh, lid of the jar and put that spoon inside this glass jar and cover it and cover the lid after some while you will find that the jar is full of fumes which fume sulfur fumes and now what you will do you will add some amount of water in this particular jar so what has been happened children over here in this deflagrating sulfur reacted with oxygen and it formed sulfur dioxide that is non metal react with oxygen form non metallic oxide now this non metallic oxide what you did you have collected in the glass jar and you non metallic oxide you added small amount of water then when you added small amount of water what is the particular compound which has been formed that is h2 SO3 what is this H2SO3 by name you will name it sulfurous acid sulfurous 
acid. So I already told you non-metal react with oxygen form non-metallic oxide and this non-metallic oxide you will name as sulfur dioxide. And then sulfur dioxide you react with water you will form acid. And what is that acid name? Sulfurous acid. If by formula you want to learn it is H2SO3. Now this particular sulfurous acid we know the name. But those who doesn't know, what is this particular compound which has been formed? You take H2SO3 in this watch glass. Watch glass is a plate which is made up of glass. That is kanch ka bana rehta. You will find in laboratory. All the things you will find in the lab children. If possible, next or another class, I will show you if I can arrange all the things. I will show you somehow some experiments to you practically. So this solution when you put it on this watch glass, both the litmus paper you dip in the solution. Immediately you will find the blue litmus started changing into red and the red remains red. So when the blue litmus started changing its color to red, we considered the nature to be acidic in nature. So hence we have proved that non-metals when react with water its nature is what children? Acidic. All children I am sending you the activity how to write the diagram everything. Among the three diagrams which diagram has to be drawn in copy that which I will send you that diagram only you will write in your classwork copy. Thank you children. Have a nice day. Any doubt, ask me through Campus Care.